Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Today, we're gonna take you on a January garden walk, perennial talk, and design discussion. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to our garden. It is so good to see you again. I appreciate all the well wishes. Um, having missed the last video, I am feeling better. Not 100%, but I am definitely getting there. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, I just wanted to start on the west side of the house with you. So the west side of our house is a full sun, afternoon, maybe partial sun for some things in the bed if they're planted further back and things are blocking them. But we'll get more into that. So coming down this way, Christopher, let's start right at the front with our Gabriel Oak Roses. These are David Austin Roses. They are very thorny. Check them out. Yeah, they're also a, possibly swelling a little bit. There is a little swelling. Not so good. Not so good on the swelling, but hopefully they um, go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. And in front of those is an edge, a hedge of Walker's Little Catmint, which we absolutely love. We are going to bring out the edge a little bit all the way along this border this season. Um, we're also going to do some rearranging of some of the perennials, which kind of brings us to that perennial talk. And so we have this great opportunity to work with Proven Winners and Walters Gardens. We have some 2025s that we get to trial for them. We have some new 2024s, and then we have some perennials that are new to us, but not new on the market. So they're readily available. Um, but back to here, we do have our grouping of Firelight Tidbit Hydrangeas. These are a panicle. They bloom on new wood. And you can see that I did not deadhead them and the blooms are just kind of falling apart and they'll blow away before the new season starts. Our Weeping Norway Spruce is looking just lovely, doing exactly what we want it to be, to be this like, I don't know, sentinel? Yeah, that's is a that good right way word? to put it just kind of at the front of the bed. Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangeas, recently planted in the fall. Really excited to see how these do with their re-blooming qualities they're supposed to have. Limelight Prime, we definitely have some critter holes happening, probably some sort of mice or something to that effect. Let's like keep our fingers crossed for some hawks or owls or foxes or other predators <laughs> to come and snatch them up <laughs> before they do any damage. Our Shiloh Splash River Birch this season is showing its bark for the first time, which is really cool. Yeah, it's really nice little peeling bark. It is a river birch. It's just a variegated river birch. Yeah, and it is a small tree or large shrub. So we're really excited about that. I'm going to limb it up a little bit, I think, this season, just so it doesn't compete so much with that Limelight Prime over there. And then I'll also prune back that Limelight Prime pretty hard because I like to keep the panicles pretty pretty tidy. Um, coming along here, we had some Fall in Love Sweetly Anemones tucked in the back. I think that they didn't get enough sun, so I think we're going to try one of those brand new for 2025, Christopher? Yes, it's a 2025. Thalictrum. I think it's called Cotton Candy. Cotton Candy. Cotton Candy Thalictrum I think is going to be beautiful. You know that we love Thalictrum, so it's going to go right in here in this area with the Fall in Love Sweetly in front of it. I think it's going to be a great texture contrast. They bloom at different times of the season, so we're going to get that continuous bloom cycle through the season really like that. Our Hollywood juniper that was planted in the fall seems to be falling a little bit forward, which will fix it at some point. But it makes me wonder if maybe the critters moved in because they were like, ooh, soft, fresh soil. This is where we're going to make our <laughs> nest. Um, but it'll be fine. Um, we do have more catmint here because we love to repeat catmint throughout the garden. It is like our go-to perennial. It has beautiful bluish green foliage, purple flowers. The pollinators love it. it. You usually get about three flushes out of it per season. To my right, sorry to switch directions so quickly, is our That's Vanderwolf okay. pine. Check out this gorgeous pine with its variegated needles. I just love it so much. We got a little nervous a couple years ago. There was a problem with its leader, but since it's pyramidal, it chose a leader and there you can see it yeah, it's going to go right very back. fast growing i don't yeah. know if we will candle it this year or not just to kind of size control it i doubt we will because i kind of like that whimsical yeah structure. it's so pretty um these were added last summer these stepping stones in the ground really easy to do if you can just get your hands on a couple of you know flat stones you just lay them on the ground and then i just use a knife and cut around them lifted up the stone pulled up the sod underneath them and threw that stone back on top. Really easy to install. 
And this is our Pillar Chif White uh, Rose of Sharon. Mm -hmm. And this is our just, I think it's like a weekend forsythia, just like a traditional type of forsythia. We're going to let it bloom and then we're going to coppice it. We're going to do a whole video on coppice pruning in the spring. This is one of the contenders only to keep it nice and tidy and size controlled and, you know, help out there. We have daylilies here that I can already see are getting eaten by something. So they're pushing growth, oddly enough, in late January. Yeah, that's very and they're definitely getting nibbled. Um, but then we get to this area here, and this is kind of where we're going to restructure some stuff. We do have a Claire Austin Rose on a obelisk from Gardener Supply. This is the Essex obelisk. I think, Christopher, we're going to switch this one with one of our square ones in the back. Yes, we have some big plans going on in our back garden yes. for next year. And so then we get into this, like... What 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 was it? It was like a Monarda. Uh... It was yes, it was a kind of Monarda. You had grown up from seed. It was a lemon something. Lemon bomb. It wasn't lemon bomb. It was like lemon bee bomb something. It was something. But we're gonna kind of horse mint or something, right? Yeah. And it didn't really do much. I think we're gonna work in some of the newer perennials to into this spot. So once we remove this here, I think this is where we're going to put one of those new perennials called Salvia Big Sky. It's like 30 inches. It gets huge. Um, it is full sun. So that's another reason why we'll probably end up coppicing this forsythia. Um, but then it'll repeat that beautiful light purple color that the catmint has. But it'll be in like a nice big structure. It blooms later in the season. And we love a salvia or a catmint with our roses. That will be so pretty with the pale color of Claire Austin and the big, huge salvia. And then right behind it, as this grows, this is a purple obelisk beach. So this is going to have that beautiful dark foliage that's going to make the things in front of it pop. And I kind of think like the dark purple and dark red foliage is the unsung hero of the garden because it might not be the most eye catching thing, but it certainly makes everything around it really pop and stand out. What do you think? I think it's going to be amazing. Absolutely. Down here is a creeping flocks that we have. It seems to be really popular um, to eat. <laughs> you know, this might be a nice place to put one of those new asters. Maybe. I kind of am picturing those new asters on the berm in the back because I remember we very consciously walked around late summer last year and we're focusing on where are we missing flowers. And I think the berm was definitely missing late summer flowers. You're very right. And the asters do bloom late. Right here we have some Baptisia. These are going to double in size. You know how when you go to the garden center and you see um, like those little Baptisias that have like two or three sticks in them. And they look like, oh, I don't know if I want to buy that. Definitely worth purchasing. They grow so quickly and establish so nicely. We're just going to have a nice floofy bluish green foliage hedge right here. And then in front of it is an agastache that Christopher grew from seed. That may or may not return. It is returning. Look. What? Come zoom in. Oh my goodness. It's already this... returning. But it's also heaving. So I had mentioned heaving on Instagram at some point and someone messaged me and they said, what do you mean you're looking for heaving? And so heaving is when the ground has frozen and thawed and frozen and thawed so much that the plant's root ball is starting to like, it's starting to lift out of the ground. And so these, we might want to come back through and throw some extra compost around them. This right here is really doing well. This go ember waves. Ember waves. This Western is a Monrovia evergreen. Yeah. And it, uh, it's an arborvitae hybrid, right? And uh, it just has these beautiful gold colors. So one of the things we want to do when kind of reworking this bed, and all of our decisions right now aren't final, we're just kind of talking through it, is we have to really consider our reddish purple foliage, our yellow foliage, our bluish green foliage, like this Lamium or the Baptisia, and then like really nice rich green foliage. And we want to make sure that we have enough all along the border. I think we need to make the border a little bit deeper and I think we need more evergreen structure in the border. A little more depth to this side of the house would help, right? Like at least yeah. six feet all the way throughout. Yeah, I think that right now, because it's the less... Um, oh my gosh, I'm crashing into the tree. <laughs> um, it's not as wide as the other side of the yard. 
we kept things a little bit tight to the house originally, but I think it's time that we bring it out to give it a little bit more of that um, rich look. Yeah, and just like the more of the layers, more of the, the height variation, the texture variation, the color variation. I want to love this side of the house as much as I love the east side of the house because I walk down that east side of the house and I'm like, yes, this is perfect. I'm loving this. This just needs tweaking. I walk down this side of the house and I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> We're going to work on that. So coming along here, you can see the remnants of some Neptune catmint. This is a totally different variety of catmint underneath our lilac tree, which we keep very well pruned. This is a really cool thing. This is the Blue Feathers Hinoki Cypress. I'm loving the texture and the color that this brings. I'm noticing we have a lot of bluish green on this side, and I think what we need is something with weight, a little heft, something with dark foliage. I think some a still be dark side of the moons would be really good. Oh, good idea. Yeah, I think there's a new pineapple lily that has some dark foliage on it that I also think would be nice on this side of the house. That's the purple rain euconomous. Yeah. Euconomous pineapple lily. So really, that's a great really option. Pretty. I mean, we do have this dark purple beach. And we do have this wine or uh, um, wine and roses Wygela, right? Is that what it is? Wine yep. and roses Wygela. So that's another dark foliage, but that I don't think is enough dark foliage for this side of the house. So I think we need a little bit more. Um, although this sedum is dark foliage, it comes back pretty late. You can see the rosettes are already coming up. I don't know if you want to zoom in oh, or not. Yeah, Mr. I love the rosettes. They're so fun. And we do actually, now that we're kind of going through it again, you know how you forget when you're not outside in the garden every day? We do have this hookara. Which one is this again? That is um, dressed up evening gown. Dressed up evening gown. And then we have the wildberry hookara underneath the Emily Bronte roses, which, which I have not gotten to um, take care of for the winter yet, but that's okay. But they are so robust. If you go on the David Austin Roses website, it says they get four feet tall. These have gotten like eight feet tall for us in the past. So they are very robust roses. And our Parkland Pillar Birch, I am loving it so much. This trio of Arborvitaes that I got planted in the fall, the Christopher Bond and Clearance. We'll see how they do. We'll see how they do. I don't know. They look like they're struggling. And then Christopher, look over here. I thought we had solved our problem with this runoff from the downspout here. But it looks like I haven't solved it because look, we definitely have some erosion happening here underneath the red bud. And this is a Carolina sweetheart red bud. Um, but there is erosion happening. So we've got to figure out how that's going to work. Three pufferfish hydrangeas. Look at the red intense color on that dogwood. That you cut back to the ground. I too, did. So that is beautiful. Super intense red. Arctic fire dogwood. Yeah. So over here on the far west side, of course, is the limelight hedge that looks really, really nice. It is really, um, it's ready for its prune, which will come in the next month or two. Oh yeah, I'm excited to show everybody how we prune panicle hydrangeas. Yeah, the method is, um, Eric's method is pretty foolproof. Um, with 15 of them, it might take a little bit longer it's than it gonna be. It's gonna <laughs> There's take... going to be a lot of sped up action in yes. the video. <laughs> um, this is actually a sprinter boxwood that we got as a quart size two years ago. So it is sprinting. The first year it really didn't do much, but the second year it sprinted. So we'll just give this a little bit of a light prune probably in late May so that it continues to bulk out and give us a little bit of a globe interest there. The um, This emerald green arborvitae, this is one of those box store, em you know, emerald green arborvitaes that you see all the time. And, and you can see it's a little misshapen towards the bottom because that's where the limelight was pressing into it last it season. It is. There's like a little bit of a, yeah. a lump in there. Yeah. There's also a perennial. silver lining artemisia. Silver lining artemisia. Which in there. I think it's probably too wet for it there. So we're going to end up moving that. And this is going to be a great spot to pop in maybe those new campanula. The new campanula. Because I um, love purple and like a lime green color. Yeah, there's a couple beautiful new items coming out in 2025. So we're excited to get our hands on some of them and show you how they do. It's a really pretty upright dark purple campanula called Bells and Whistles, which will also have great contrast against 
the Woolerton Old Hall, David Austin Climbing Rose. I know. I love this rose. I love this trellis. This is the half Essex trellis from Gardener Supply. And I, it, we took a, a piece out of it this season. It does have another piece that makes it taller. But the Woolerton Old Hall does get about 12 feet tall. So <laughs> ideally, what I'd love is if we could train it along the top of the fence. Yeah. I think that'd be really be pretty. Be really, really pretty. Especially when there's nothing on the ground, just to have it kind of floating above. Yeah. I think our neighbors would like that too. Yeah, they'll get a little bit of that beautiful fragrance, too. Besides this little bit of irrigation situation, the shady area back here is looking fantastic. The Sweet and Low Saracoca is great. It actually has its buds on because it is a flowering oh, evergreen. Oh, yeah. You can see its little buds are on there. I'm excited to see that one. I think it's going to be really nice. And there's the name again. Um, sometimes um, Proof of Winners Color Choice, when they send us a shrub, will also send out like really cool name tags to go with it. So that's one of them. Yeah. And then we have the two Gatsby Moon oak leaf hydrangeas. You know, we always say this when you see an oak leaf hydrangea in its nursery can, it's going to look crazy or sad. They just don't do well in the nursery cans. But once you get them in the ground for a season, they really just take on these architectural kind of sweeping branches. And this is going to get big. This is going to be probably. Eight yeah, feet I mean, my eventually. goal when designing this bed with these two oak leaf hydrangeas was that they would just kind of merge into each other and that they would cover these hellebores during the heat of the summer. But then during the winter, the hellebores would get to shine. And those are Trader Joe's hellebores and Christopher. I think this is the perfect time of year to go to Trader Joe's and get your hellebores yes. and just put them in your garage until yeah. the spring. They're going to look like garbage. I promise you they're not going to look great, but they will rebound. And there are some new hellebore foliages coming out. All just, of our hellebores are from Trader Joe's. I just saw a great tip from Yulia at Why Do You Garden that this time of year when things are looking a little bit, you know, dicey weather-wise, keep the old foliage on there. That's going to get replaced by that new foliage coming out just to protect the plant. So yeah. I'm not going to touch these for a while. Plus, this foliage looks fantastic. Yeah, it looks good. I Why would I cut it. that off? Over here are two Empress Wu hostas and a uh, hole. So we know we know these critters are in here right I now. They've taken, taken root. Um, and these are so big and beautiful underneath the blood good Japanese maple. Which I think I'm going to do another big prune on this spring. Yeah, because it's going to have to be lifted. I bet you these two Empress Woos are probably four feet off the ground by the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, with the irrigation system all set up, they'll probably do very well there. And they get the right amount of sun. They just get the last couple hours of sun. I think that's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Do you want to take us up on the terrace and show us where we hide our little patio peach and that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. Follow me. <clears throat> We've got all the furniture wrapped up, tucked away. We still use the grill, so that's not put away. <laughs> These are those arborvitaes that we bought at the end of the season last year. I think we're going to take three of them and put them on each side with the um, Blue Point junipers. Yeah. That'll so. be really nice. We're going to start, you know, we're not allowed <clears throat> in our neighborhood to bring the fence closer to the road than the um, edge of our house. So we're going to start doing some evergreen screening to continue that fence a little bit. And this blue Moffet is so happy in the container. It looks so good. I know. I don't even know what we're going to do with it as it grows, <laughs> but we are not moving it this season. Yeah. I might, maybe I'll prune it back a little bit. Not prune it, but yeah, prune it, I guess. Maybe tighten it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, shear it a little bit. Tighten it up. Yeah. I don't know. It's gorgeous. It's but... really, really pretty. So here, excuse this mess. This is what the... <laughs> the terrace looks like this time of year a little bit of combination of shoes a and dead that. foxtail fern that we forgot to bring in yeah forgot to bring that in this is the <laughs> um patio peach which is in great shape except we walked past it and might have pulled a couple I definitely branches bumped off into the branch yeah. um that's the blonde ambition grass and then that is the beech tree hi frederick so these are going to get moved out as once the season changes but this is enough to protect this from the harshness of the weather. It's right in this corner, and obviously the house is going to keep things a little bit warmer. Yeah, and then we have our empty container, our corner container for shade, our empty hanging baskets. These are 
fantastic baskets that I originally bought from Hay Needle, but Christopher keeps telling me Hay Needle doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't so he's exist gonna find anymore. a link. I'm trying. And he's gonna tried. put it in the description. But I'm telling you now, I didn't buy black ones. I painted them black. I think I had bought like natural rust finish. Yeah, they were rusted. Yeah. And there's our hammock still hanging, even though we don't use it this time of year. <laughs> but yeah, let's head out this direction. Down here on our patio area, down off of the terrace, we have our pergola. A lot of people ask us where this pergola is from. It's from Costco. Um, it's a, it, I think the brand is Mirador. Mirador, Miramar, is that is? something like and that. And it's louvered on top. We rarely close it. Um, but underneath is our fire bowl and our Adirondack chairs. I'm thinking, Christopher, now we incorporate some sort of climber right up here, only up this one leg. And then we see it perfectly out of the dining room window. Mm -hmm. When you come out, you kind of get greeted by this flower and it kind of softens this one edge right here. I think it'd be really easy to push away some of this crushed gravel underneath, kind of cut through some of the fabric, maybe put some sort of uh, bottomless container. We could find a beautiful container, cut the bottom off, kind of like Bunny Guinness does put it in the ground and then maybe do a climbing rose climbing rose annual vine an annual vine honeysuckle honeysuckle maybe bougainvillea all for bougainvillea. An annual. um but something kind of here just to add height we'd have to come up with some sort of way for it to climb on it though yeah um, but i do think that having something in the center of the terrace or the patio area would be really pretty. And just being cautious around the top, like making sure it doesn't get involved in the louvers in any way. Not that we use them often at all, but just kind of maintaining that. So we don't want something that's 25 feet or we don't want a climbing hydrangea or anything like that. We want something that stays a reasonable height. So if you think of anything, it's a full sun location. It's sandy soil, but probably going to be a little bit amended within a pot. Just let us know in the comments. Yeah. Over here on my right are our elevated beds. These elevated beds are all from Gardener's Supply. Uh, we are going to, well, we're not rearranging them, but we are going to spread them out a little bit. We're gonna kind of take the whole thing, shift it a little this way to the east so it's more centered in the space, and then spread them out a little bit this way, just to have more room to maneuver around them. This is, such a it, the area has been great for us Ooh, christopher come look <laughs> what do we got what do we got we have some drowning strawberries oh no and they're frozen in place oh no oh yeah we gotta we're trying to overwinter these strawberries oh, that goodness. are kind of drowning and look at these poor sedums oh sedums don't like water oh gosh this, this wasn't a good idea we thought we'd held them in to help protect them but Maybe they don't need that. Yeah, maybe they don't need that. Maybe they are zone three, I'm pretty sure. Oh, but are they zone water? <laughs> yeah, are they zone um, underwater? Yeah, so we'll just kind of tend to this quickly. Ooh. Um, and Those are not waterproof gloves. No. Let's see what's in here. There's tongs in here. Tongs? What are the tongs for? Good question. <laughs> you know what, Grow For Me Gardening, we love to use the wrong tool for the job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, well, I think we're gonna have to come back and deal with these. Yeah, we'll have some warmer weather soon enough. Yeah. Or maybe like with a more functional tool that we can kind of hack a little <laughs> bit at the soil. The first two came out, so I thought, Oh, Ugh. oh, right in the eye. It's okay. <laughs> it's nature. It's a natural. Oh, good. They're coming out. They just wanted me to work for it. Do you think these will survive? No. You don't think so? No, I really don't think they're gonna. <laughs> really? <laughs> one of them has, um, look at this one over here. Oh, does it have rosettes? Yes. <laughs> you know, sedum are pretty hardcore plants, I guess. And these are a darker foliage, so this was one that I had picked up thinking we could pop them in somewhere. Yeah, but we'll get back to those two. <laughs> um, we have our strawberries that are putting on growth in January for some reason. Our rosemary that is just left over probably doesn't even taste good at all at this point. But you know what? It is a zone seven hardiness. 
So oh. technically we haven't gone below zero this year. <laughs> All right, that's true. Um, we do have some really cool irrigation systems coming for this bed. We're going to put on some really neat new products from Gardener Supply that are some um, feet that prevent your beds from sinking in gravel. And uh, just some other cool accessories we're excited to share. Yeah, with there's you. a little makeover coming for the yeah, elevated beds. Slight makeover. I mean, they'll be completely recognizable, but let's head this direction over here. Our Aruncus grass is doing well. Our um, saffron crocus are putting on growth, but they seem to be getting eaten. More catmint, limelight, little lime punch hydrangeas underneath our contorted Diana larch. Look at this tree. I love it so much. It's fantastic. Underneath this is, I believe it's pink potion salvia, right? It is not pink potion. It is um, purple illusion. Purple illusion. We do have pink potion somewhere. It's the perennial of the year, right? No, purple illusion, I believe, is the salvia of the year. Or pink oh. profusion. Pink. We'll put it up on the screen. Profusions, potions, illusion, something. Yeah. Um, Columb or, uh, purple pillar. Pillar, Rose of Sharon. I always want to say columnar, but it's not. These are our wine and rose Ygelas, or our spilled wine Ygelas we transplanted from the front. This trellis here, we're going to switch out for one of the round ones. Just because once we installed that Jardin trellis over there with that beautiful round structure, I, my eye does not love that these are now square. And because we have round ones on the edge, I think we'll just kind of switch them. Put the yeah. square along peasy. the edge and the rounds on the center. That'll be really easy. And they're clematis, so they get cut to the ground anyway. Well, this version of clematis. Yes, that clematis will be coming down. These are three Estacia Vi roses that we transplanted. They're looking great. I'm thinking this is another place where we could consider putting those pineapple lilies. Oh yes, the purple foliage against that pale, or even, not even pale, but rich pink in the rose, gorgeous. Yeah, our foxgloves are here. Our sprinter boxwoods are getting a lot of tip brown out and die back this season, unfortunately. So we'll see how they recover. They're definitely gonna need a prune. This is our prairie fire crab apple. We'd bought in a pretty small specimen, but it seems to be getting established pretty well. Yeah, it's growing well. Yeah. Sugar shack button bushes in the center there. That's kind of the the weight of this corner, if you want to put it that way, when we designed this bed. More Walker's Low Catmint. This is a Sting Arbor Vitae. A small hedge of Invincible lace hydrangeas behind this shad blow a hedge of spireas these are tell me christopher double play artisan double play artisan with a little trio of tiny quick fire right here underneath this jardin bird cage trellis we have um some bush clematis which doesn't do great for us so and i think this is a place for a new perennial that's not a bad idea i'm almost wondering i i do so love that Clematis, it's stand by me lavender. And I'm wondering if it just needed drip. Maybe. Needed I mean, we can give love. it one more year. We could give it one more year and it would look so pretty in that Jardin trellis. It would look really pretty in the Jardin trellis. That's okay. We'll give it one more year. You know what other new perennial we have coming is the bobblehead. Is it bobblehead? Allium. Bobblehead. Bubblehead or bobblehead? Bobblehead. Allium. That we could put by the Estacia Vi if we decide to use that pineapple lily elsewhere. That's a good idea. So that's cool. We'll put that up on the screen so you can see what that's going to look like. Our trio of flavor at Honey Apricot Roses is right here. This spot here we grew corn in last season and I loved growing the corn. I think we should do the corn again right here. Yes, you did get that new version of corn. Yeah, and this is just for decoration. There's nothing under it right now. It's not protecting anything. But uh, so that's kind of this side of the terrace and patio. All right, so let's take a look at the berm, which as you can see is a pond at this time of year. The reason the berm was even installed is for drainage. And that drainage goes way down a hill here to one of those retention ponds down the way. It makes this black pussy willow very happy, which is getting ready to send out the black catkins. It's all swelled up, which is really cool. We have considered taking this to the ground and coppicing it. We've considered tree forming it. We have considered just 
leaving it alone. Many, many options there. I'm not sure which is the best one, but- I'm team coppice. I am almost team tree because I love the pollard willow that I've done on the other side. Oh, you want to pollard it. Pollarding this. Oh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Which would turn it into a multi-stem tree and then you prune it at the same height every year as a size control measure. It's something that we actually just saw in the Caribbean, which was very cool. They have these trees that are so thick and the trunks are so thick, but the tree itself on top is not really that big. So that would be a cool idea here because it would give us all this planting area for things that really love water. Yeah, and so speaking of what loves water, those uh, perennial hibiscus love water. And yes. we have a trio coming. There's a, a new for 2025, first of its kind ever, cookies and cream hibiscus, about three feet tall, four feet wide. They have figured out a way to give you the dark foliage and the white flower, but they got rid of the red center. So it is a truly cookies and cream plant. That would look really cool here, and we know they love the water. Yeah, we'd have to just figure out a way to kind of reshape the bed, make sure we don't mess with drainage yes. or flow of water. So that's that's a fun little project. That's a fun little thing to do. Over here, there's quite a few iris, which we'll see what happens with the iris. They haven't been the most successful plant for us. I feel like I might have some cape or a coat swooshing right now. Um, this is a sea green juniper. It's just hanging out, doing fine, giving us that interest up underneath this river birch, this peeling bark is epic. It's so pretty. It's so and we did beautiful. limb this up quite a bit in the fall. We like to prune our river birches in fall because in the spring, the sap is flowing. Right. So we don't want to mess with the health of the tree, but we did want to lift this up, give everything below it a little breathing room. There is some Huskers, Huskers Red. Huskers Red. Penstemon that has seeded itself around in the most beautiful drift. We only had three plants here and now we probably have 15. They look so good. The foliage is nice and they have spread out very, very well. Going in through here, there's the Pinky Winky Hydrangea. There's three Tough Stuff Hydrangeas. This I see critter holes around those Tough Stuffs though. <laughs> you don't see any. Where are those owls? I heard an owl the other evening. So loud. It was so loud. I was Lots like, oh, I hope it's out there feasting. Yes, I think we might have mentioned before, this Jolly Good Clematis is going to be moving. Oh, maybe the Jolly Good moves to the pergola. Ooh, that's a good idea. This is yeah. a really pretty Clematis. It we just, just have to double check how big it gets, because if it gets too big and it's going to get all into the louvers, it'll yeah, be an issue. then we don't want that. And then we begin with the Green Giant Arborvitaes. Yes, but this right here where you are, Christopher, if we bring this out a bit, do you think we can put the new asters there? Oh, that's a good idea. The asters would be good because right here we have a very early spring flower. We have the storm cloud. Amsonia. Amsonia. And then we lose color here. We just have a beautiful foliage. So if we were to put some of the new asters here, that would give us the late summer color and replace that. Yeah, that'd that's be cool. What are they called? We'll put it on the screen. Stokes Aster. Yes. Riptide. Riptide. That's what go. it is. <laughs> We're learning the new ones as they come in. So we get to see them. Here we have a very sad looking elderberry. Yeah, that's a black lace elderberry. I'm thinking it's coming out. I think it might come out, guys. It the elderberries don't out. thrive for us. I don't know why. You know, and there is a hedge here of little lime hydrangea. So we have the really pretty white flower. This is a sonic pink um, re-blooming Wygilla. So I have a thought. Maybe we do a black. Um, oh, gosh. The one that comes up and out that we never have. The nine bark? The nine bark. Maybe this is the place for the nine bark. Maybe. Maybe summer we wine. We gotta find like the right nine bark. Like, or summer wine Super, black. super dark. Super dark. I think that could be a good option here. Just to give us that darkness. Either that or we just get another Winecraft black smoke bush because we love those. This Adagio grass has not fallen apart yet. Sometimes our ornamental grasses in winter really fall apart and make a mess. But this has been fine. Our viburnum is ready to go. This has its buds on it. This will be covered in softball size white 
up from spring, it will be the most beautiful show. Love that. As we move along here, look at our red obelisk beach still holding its leaves. Holding its leaves. So, you know, of course, when they push out the new leaves, it'll just litter the ground with leaves right after we mulch, probably. That's always <laughs> we'll fun. We'll have to time it better than that. We... <laughs> um, here, it's funny. It feels like there's a big hole here, but this is a morning light miscanthus grass that gets about five feet tall. Beautiful billowing habit. And next to it is a limelight prime. So this is going to fill the little gap in very, very well. I'm interested to see how the morning light and the green giant play well together. I think there's going to be some shearing happening this spring on the green giants, Just especially at the base. Tighten yeah. them up a little yep. bit. Um, as we go across, we have this butterfly bush. We'll wait to see where the new growth comes from in spring before we prune it. This is a Rose of Sharon that will just let keep doing its thing and leave it alone. And under these, the reblooming quince, we are going to be planting some lavender. We needn't, we don't really have an area where we could say we have great drainage, but we know this is great drainage because it's on a hill. So we were thinking about adding a hedge of the Sweet Romance Lavender right down around this yeah, area. Yeah, we would just pop the edge out a little bit and put the Sweet Romance Lavender there. Yeah. So coming back this way, we'll walk past our Princeton Century Ginkgo, which I'm hoping self-corrects itself somehow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little bit wonky of a shape, but... It is. It'll be fine, though. It'll be fine. Some more sprinter boxwoods right underneath this um, black gum tree, which I'm really excited to see how this grows and shapes up. Our trio of steady eddy viburnums. I do think we probably put them a little close together as they're growing, but I think they're going to be fine. They'll just grow into each other and be a big, beautiful mass of white blooms. Tater, tight ar tater tot arborvitae, a small hedge of midnight sun wygelas, Behind those are three, I always forget the name. Snowfire. Always talk about how the deer and critters eat them. So these are always on the chopping block, but we'll see how they do this year. They're a really pretty shrub, and we have been pushing to try and keep them and make it work. Yes. Behind those is a drift of Midnight Masquerade. Midnight Masquerade is another perennial that just gets very robust and very big. These were, I think, one or two gallons when we planted them. They're just going to be a giant mass of penstemon by the time that they are mature, which I'm really excited about. This is a trio of quick fire fab panicle hydrangea. These are going to be a great ones to show an example of how to prune panicles on. Yes. Our drift of reminiscent pink roses. And of course, Walker's low catmint coming along the edge here. Again, this might be another place to ideally throw in the bobblehead allium because we love the serendipity allium. Who knows where we'll fit it, but maybe maybe we'll figure something out. These are ancient mariner roses from David Austin Roses. If you are looking for a pink rose and you have full sun and you want blooms all season and you love that English shrub rose, this is the way to go. The ancient mariner. Yep. Our hedge of tough stuff, top fun hydrangeas really excited we had annuals here last year so we have an empty spot for some of our new perennials oh so who knows what could end up here so maybe this is where that big sky salvia goes yeah it could be last year we had rock and play in the blue salvia here and i loved it so much it was a really nice spot for that vertical we will always have rock and play in the blue salvia somewhere in our garden for sure. And we also do have quite a few flowers coming from seeds, so that could be That's an area true. to tuck something in. This is a bloomerang purple lilac. More sprinter boxwoods. In the center here is where we had our champagne majorette hollyhocks that did so well. Were so gorgeous. We might repeat them, we might not. It looks like they're actually putting on growth and they're supposed to be annual, so I have no idea what that's about. I have no idea what that's about. Tottering by Gently, David Austin Roses. Loving those. These are Midnight Wine Shine. We have it flanked on both sides here. Our uh, Campania International Fountain is all covered up for the winter. Lady of Shalott Roses are behind it. Um, ideally, what's going to happen this season is they're going to be so tall and so billowing and just like flowing over the wall that the blooms are nonstop beautiful smelling as we sit there. Walker's Low Catmint filled in here. This is our Invincible Sublime Hedge, which I absolutely adore. 
I cannot recommend this hydrangea enough. If you love that lime green Annabelle lace cap, not lace cap, nope. If you have that lime green type flower, it's beautiful. You can see the structure of our Weeping Ruby Falls red bud here. I'm going to do a little bit of pruning. There's some like crossing stuff in there I want to get rid of. And I don't particularly care for when the weeping red buds kind of just look like snuffle up, I guess. Yeah, no, we garden. don't want that. I don't really love that. But let's go this direction to finish off this bed quick, Christopher. We have our Let's Dance Skyview Hydrangea here. This is a new reblooming hydrangea. I'm excited to see how it does. The buds look good on it so far. High hopes, high hopes. Yeah. Walker's Low Cat Mint. This is our Jardin. Uh, trellis. These lights are coming off. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, they look, I look at them. At I don't night. love it, but they were great for the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is the sensation honeysuckle. And I think it's just going to cover this this year, especially now with all the new drip irrigation we just installed. And we're going to do another follow-up video in the spring, kind of finessing the irrigation and putting individual drips to things that need it and doing more emitters and things like that. Boscobel Rose lamb's ear some foxglove and that kind of just covers this whole bed yeah so let's start at the back corner back here so right behind me is the path that takes us up to the top of the berm and kind of where we put our cuttings and our compost pile and stuff like that but in front of it we kind of call this our wilderness corner and you can see how we've left a lot of seed heads up over the winter there is milkweed there's bee balm there's agastache there's a lot going on in this corner that will require a lot of cleanup come spring. These are our perennial hibiscus. These will get cut back once they start showing in the spring. This is a hedge of mini mauvettes that we kind of raise it up because you can see there is a little bit of water that accumulates here, but we wanted them up and out of the water because they don't care for wet feet. They seem to be doing pretty well, although this is kind of falling down more than I'd like it to. So that might be something we have to address. But coming over here in our grass, when you see this, this is when like little mice or voles or critters are underneath the snow getting places and they're eating the grass. And I don't know if you remember our video where we cleaned up this area, but there was a whole nest of critters back here. And I think they're probably still there. Yep. Um, so if you have a friend who is an owl, a friend who's a hawk or a fox, just summon to our garden and let's get rid of these critters. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> This is right here, Lich Lichfield Angel, which seems to be happy where it is. It's on the Jardin birdcage trellis. This one is Crown Princess Margareta. This is another one of those trellises we're going to switch out. And it might look short, but we have pieces that have been taken out because I don't like the look of like a super tall trellis on a really short plant. So I like to add the pieces as the plant gets bigger. Yeah, it, it kind of balances out. Yeah. This is all of our Agastache. And that back there is our actual one elderberry that did well. Oh, yes. Lemony lace. Lemony lace elderberry. Our sting arborvitae is so pathetic. We transplanted it and then forgot to water it at the end of the season. And oh, yeah. It's then rough. it's getting eaten. And I'm really interested to see how it rebounds. But that is totally user error. Totally our fault on that one. <laughs> that was so The other bad. two are so much different. Yeah. Do you want to come over there and then I'll go this way? Sure. So we have left up all of our seed heads on our sedum, some seed heads on our serendipity allium. This is our drift of daylilies. A lot of people asked, somebody messaged, said, oh, you don't have any daylilies. We do. We have some. They're not really my favorite or Crozera's favorite, but we understand their purpose in the garden and they have that nice strappy texture and they have that late, late summer color. I mean, they are beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah. Um, our panicle hydrangeas, very oddly shaped. I can't wait to reshape these in the spring. Our Tromnar Blue Spruce, our transplanted Rolled Doll. This right here, we had Ageratum. I think this year we're trying new for us, but not new on the market, right? Correct. It is color coded. Once in a melon. Once in a melon echinacea. I always say we have we struggle with echinacea, but we are we are giving it a go. Yeah. We're going to do that peachy color in front of the blue needles of this evergreen. And I think it's going to be gorgeous. It will be absolutely beautiful. So my only worry, though, is this is a peachy rose. It's going to be a mono color scheme moment. Maybe. We might need, <laughs> like, one thing here to separate those two. 
Well, Maybe we, like a super dark coleus or something. Oh, that could be it. We also have quite a few flowers that were growing from seed. That's remember? true. I always forget about those. <laughs> our repetition of our panicles. These are more fall in love sweetly anemones, right? Yes, and that's gotten very thick and beautiful. Yeah, right? they say they spread, but much slower than traditional anemones. And then getting up to one of my absolute favorite areas of the garden underneath the redbud tree. This is just one of my most favorite spots because it's one of the first spots I really thought came together in our garden. But as the red bud has grown, the things underneath it are getting less sun. So some of our full sun perennials like the banana cream daisies are kind of fizzling out. So we're going to relocate those and add some banana cream daisies too, which are an improved variety. And we're going to put in here um, a new spider wart, which I'm really excited it's about. It's called Webmaster. Webmaster, and it can handle part sun. And then we're also adding in a new Astilbe Dark Side of the Moon. It's not new, new. I think it was out last year, maybe yeah. the year before. And I think that dark foliage of the Dark Side of the Moon with the uh, Tritoscantia is going to be a gorgeous combination. Yeah, it'll be really pretty there. And then in the most shaded spot towards the back, maybe we'll put in a Crested Fern. Or oh, a Red Rover surf. Fucarella. Yeah. Very nice. Maybe the most shaded spot. But there are some of our newer hydrangeas that we planted back there. Those are the Monrovia Seaside Cape Lookout. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to see how those do. Um, I don't know if we're banking on them, but we're going to we're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. We have our roses. See how we have the square trellis over here? I thought if we move those two other square trellises down on this side to kind of like, so it all lines up. Yeah. So they're kind of all together. I think that'd be great. Um, and our mill on the floss, but look at the structure on that red bud. It's doing it. Kind of hard to see right now with the trees behind it. All right, so you can see the Generous Gardener Rose made it all the way to the top of the Gothic Arch this year, which we were very excited about. And then hopefully the Betty Corning Clematis joins it all the way up at the top. Now that Betty Corning has to be cut to the ground, right? I think 18 inches from the ground, okay. but it's a quick grower. And the reason I chose the Betty Corning is because it has um, flowers that drop a little bit. They kind of hang down. So how beautiful will it be when you look up and see those flowers facing down at you, surrounded by the big, fluffy, pale pink, generous gardener roses? Um, there's some areas here that also have perennials. This is a... Um, Boom Chocolata Geranium that did very well. I think it's going to do even better this year because we added in the Drip, um, the Campania International Litchfield. Litchfield Urn, which we should be able to remember because we have the Litchfield Angel Rose yep. is right over there. This is a, oh my goodness. It's Winecraft Gold. Winecraft Gold. And that's on the coppice list that's as an experiment. As an experiment, we're going to bring that down to see how it reflushes if it's brought down. Um, Pagoda Dogwood, one of my favorite trees. We'll see how that does this year. It did put on quite a lot of growth that I didn't realize until the um, leaves were gone. The uh, Rhododendron Dandy Man color wheel looks so beautiful right now. It really does. And we're hoping to make this bed a shade bed eventually. Yes, because obviously the Pagoda Dogwood is going to start branching out. Um, it should get somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 feet wide if left to its own devices. So I'm thinking we should really be able to have just some the arching uh, branches give us all a very beautiful shade situation down here. So if we go to the other side, we have at the start of the hydrangea room, we have some of the peachberry ice hookera, and behind that is the ever after. Veronica. So we're going to bring in a little bit more of both of those perennials to bulk up our display. It's such a beautiful combination. The peach color mixed in with that blue and the dark, dark green foliage in front of the smoke bush, which I believe we're also that's on the coppice list going to bring Fun experiment to the ground. That's going to be really cool. Um, and the reason we're doing that, it's for shape. It's for size control. And also, apparently, when you heavily prune a smoke bush, you get bigger leaves the next year. Yeah, we're not worried about the, the blooms. We're looking for foliage. Yeah, 
the Kinsley's Ghost Honeysuckle is really taken off and it's going to cover this whole trellis wall, give us those really beautiful discs of almost eucalyptus. Like, yeah, foliage. and that, I believe, is going to be a proven winner's release. Yes, now. it's going to become part of the line. So right here, Eric, as you back up, is the hydrangea room. We have the four, five different kinds of Annabelle type hydrangeas, the arborescence. So we're going to be seeing billowing clouds of beautiful hydrangea bloom this year. Um, normally we would have our um, Adirondack chairs right here on our stone rug. And then we'll be able to nestle in there, be surrounded by beautiful flowers and take a look at this side of the garden. I'm gonna drop this because I can only imagine it might be kind of noisy right now for you guys. This Hetsy Juniper, I remember planting it. It was small. It has grown so nice. Um, the shape is really good. We do give it occasional prunes just when it kind of reaches out and tries to be a bully with other plants, such as right here. This will probably have to be adjusted because our Invincible Spirit 2 hydrangeas are going to need some more room. These are another huge success. Are these three years now, Eric? Maybe. I know they were planted as quartz. Yeah, they were quart-sized hydrangeas. Yep. Um, and something we have learned as gardeners over these last few years, plant the court. It is worth it to have the patience to watch that plant grow because every year you're amazed at the results. Um, in this area, before these hydrangeas were here, we did have some grasses, some oh, ornamental yeah. <laughs> grasses. So <laughs> That are still doing it. They still are alive. They're not thriving. Well, they're surviving, not thriving. And we want them to thrive. So I think though those they're a medium to small blue stem called Twilight Zone. I might pop those out and find another corner of the garden in full sun for them to really take off. There's also a peony back here, which did beautifully because it blooms before the hydrangeas take off. Yep. So that's really nice. Um, you can only imagine what we might be doing right here to this friend. This is the Aphrodite sweet shrub probably taking it down. It's going to be a very fun day when we just go through here. Like we have a bug. I love spring cleanup <laughs> so much. So much. Invin um, this is Invincible Ruby, another beautiful Annabelle hydrangea. We have a drift of six of them. In front of them, we have five dr um, dressed up ball gown. And, and a pistachio. Pistachio kind. ambrosia, a mixture of those two, hookera. What's very interesting is i can't remember which ones are which but right now in the cold one of the varieties has a red veining in the leaves and the other variety does not have a red veining oh isn't that kind of cool that's interesting so this shade area of course underneath the um, dappled willow looks a bit of a mess but it won't won't for long the hellebores are doing beautiful again i'm not going to pull away the old foliage until it is time to really let them grow when it's um, a little less harsh out. As you can see, it's getting harsher and harsher today. Um, but the thing I'm very excited about that's really making me think that that pussy willow in the back needs this treatment is I experimented some years ago with pollarding this willow tree, which is like you can see, I tree formed it. I chose several big trunks that I liked and I found a height that I liked. And at that height, I will prune all of this stem right back to the same spot. And when you get that spot, you go to it every single year, and that's the pollarding. So we kind of size control it. We get the interest of these trunks. I would love to see this one higher. I'd love to see this one a little bit higher, just to, you know, so that we can have it grow up, but not be in your face when you're walking through. So that's for another day to get. That Although I do in. love like the mystery it creates behind it. It does have a, a, a good bit of mystery. Um, there's another pink limelight prime right here. This Hinoki Cypress. It was one that came with a stake. We took the stake out and we're just going to let it live. Let's see what it does. Yeah. It's a really cool little kind of droopy evergreen. There's our air conditioner, which we love to find a cute way to hide, but we've yet to encounter one. Yep. The, um, this is the light o day 
true macrophylla hydrangea. It is a variegated leaf. So even if we don't get blooms, the variegated leaves are beautiful. Although this year, I got to say, this has a lot of buds. Fingers crossed, because it did not bloom the last two years. I in these gloves. Um, <laughs> the brandywine viburnum is taking shape, really starting to put on some vertical. For the first couple of years, I think in the can that it came in, it was a little sideways, but now it's starting to get more of a vertical yeah. form. Really, really nice. Here's an area where we're going to be bringing in another one of those um, new perennials. perennials. Yes. New perennial for us. What was it? Red it, Rover? It's Red Rover Hookerella. Love so that. we had done some red coleus in front of these checkmark trilogies. After they bloom, blob of green. Beautiful, but a blob of green. So we added in some of these red coleus and loved the look of it. So I think by putting some red in front of here in the um, hookerella, it'll give us a little bit of that kind of step. Yeah, up. in the height of the season, this is a very green border right in this yeah. particular spot. Absolutely. We have another sky view hydrangea tucked in down here. Underneath teasing Georgia, a Which David is Austin. getting a new trellis. New trellis, because this trellis clearly too small. is too small. <laughs> um, and then here's what we mean by oak leaf hydrangeas are going to be absolutely stunning for you. I really think they're a four season plant. They don't really talk too too much about what they look like in winter. But look at this, it's kind of like a peeling bark as they swell, and it's just, it's really pretty. It's really cool. I think it's a really awesome plant. Um, don't prune it, let it do its thing. So we're gonna wrap up the tour in the front of the house. Again, this is our island in the front with our uh, river birches in it, some winter gem boxwoods, wee white hydrangeas, and Walker's little cat mint. Over here is our vanilla strawberry uh, panicle hydrangea. This one does very well, and unfortunately, the buds are swelling on it, which I don't understand. Um, New Gen Boxwood does great for us. Blue Kazoo Spirea. This is a cute little clematis that uh, Christopher found at Trader Joe's. Olympia. Olympia. This is definitely going to get some reshaping this year now that it's found a new leader. Oh, it did get a it new leader. It did get a new leader once the other one snapped in the snowstorm. So we're just going to kind of like make sure that it accepts that leader and kind of prune it to shape. We're going to add a couple more arborvitaes in here uh, between us and the neighbor. But let's walk over to the front. We have really exciting plans for the front containers this year. Well, really exciting ideas for the front <laughs> containers this year. I mean, we That'd have a couple dumb. things we're thinking about, um, but we'll see how that comes to fruition. Look at this winter gem box with how well, it, how big it is. It's doing so well. Yeah, that one's definitely the happiest. And you know what? It doesn't get water of any kind. Wow, that's super Oh wait, impressive. you know what? It might have one. I think it has drip. I think it has a quarter <laughs> inch drip. Yeah, and that's all it needs apparently. Gallon. I think it likes the warmth of the, the driveway. Uh, you can see that our Russian sage or denim and lace back there is, we'll cut that down in the spring. Wee white hydrangeas up here. This juniper is gonna get a little reshaping. Uh, particularly cutting it away from the house a bit. More blue kazoo spireas, our hedge of uh, invincible spirit. Two hydrangeas in front of our winter gem boxwoods, which look like they are all touching. Maybe you could do your little pruning into a cloud, which would be really They're pretty. Getting close to a cloud prune. Yeah, firelight tidbit hydrangeas. And then underneath our tri colored beach, which we should probably take down. The Christmas, the Christmas lights. lights yeah. yeah, look, you can see hooves. Hoops. Look at the hooves. Um, Vanessa Bell. Catmint. This is again Walker's Low. We're going to limb up this tricolor beach for sure this spring. Yes. Um, and that's it. So that kind of takes us around the entire garden. It really does. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our garden walk around and perennial talk and kind of design discussion today. We really appreciate you joining us. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me Gardening. Thanks for growing with us.